Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is July 12th and right now we are looking at the combination of Doppler radar. As you can see, some moisture bubbling around down there associated with some monsoon moisture moving into southern Arizona. If you take a look at the screen line to the right of that is where the National Weather Service believes the best chance of thunderstorm activity will be today. Not a huge precipitation signal coming up in the next few days, but we could see some storms going on before we start to suppress them as we move towards the weekend. And the big weather story is, is the huge heat dome going to set up over the area extend all the way up into portions of northern california as well some record highs are possible we'll take a detailed look at that here coming up in a moment let's start by looking at the visible satellite imagery you can see that monsoon moisture bubbling around here the marine layer moving down the coastline nice sunny skies across some of the los angeles and san diego metro areas and of course the desert areas just huge amounts of sunshine out there you can see some of that marine layer burning off for some of the valleys near the bay area in central california as well and you can see the nice snowpack still up there across the sierra nevada here on the goes 18 satellite imagery taking a look on this day in southern cal weather history check it out a fisherman was killed by a lightning strike at redondo beach so yeah you can get some uh, interesting lightning activity across my california this time of year and you can see lingering monsoon moisture pushed northward remnants of hurricane darby brought unusually intense thunderstorm activity to death valley so it can get active this time of the year just nothing to speak of just yet but you can actually see in 1999 a tornado touched down in shelter valley though so pretty interesting even captured some of the damage that tornado did this is development of a heat wave this is high pressure the air sinks into the high pressure acting like a cap trapping heat near the surface forming a heat wave and of course the longer it persists the longer that heat wave is going to go on here and of course living in a city here where the urban heat dome does not help things this is looking at phoenix check it out as you go through the weekend 118 saturday sunday monday and friday at 117 potential record temperatures out there for some areas look at blythe 119 on saturday great graphic there from the National Weather Service Phoenix. This is Phoenix also talking about that long duration heat wave, extreme values up and through this weekend. So heads up there and the isolated high terrain thunderstorms possible as well. This is uh, Los Angeles as they go inland a little bit here. It's going to get really hot across much of Southern California as well. And if you want to beat the heat, of course, stay on the coastal areas. You can see high risk take action. This is high heat risk Sunday here for San Diego. And you can see as you go inland here, you're looking at the extreme extreme levels here across you know palm springs thermal means lake out there so heads up for that and of course much less along the coastline high temperature sunday i had to point this out to the palm springs 120 thermal 117 doesn't take much to go inland here to get some pretty warm temperatures and the deserts are just going to be roasting here as you go through the weekend so heads up for that if you're out there traveling about have a lot of water in your car be prepared near record heat so we're taking a look at national weather service hanford check it out we could be breaking some all-time record highs here as we go through the next few days on into this weekend here we'll watch that closely in the next couple days we still have a little bit of time to look at those temperatures this is the heat timeline national weather service sacramento you can see the warm-up really taking hold friday saturday and sunday here some of the valley areas getting up over 115 possibly major heat risk coming up this is eureka you can see that excessive heat watch does exist exist all the way up past Redding into some portions of Northern California out here as well. This is the Bay Area also just kind of highlighting that excessive heat watch coming up here. This is looking at the fire danger. It does include Las Vegas down there and some of Utah as well. So heads up for that. This is a three-hour precipitation running total here. This is last night's European run. You can see some of this activity bubbling across some of Arizona here as we go through the afternoon hours from the higher terrain. Not a huge precipitation signal each day, but you're going to see we redo that here Thursday afternoon also. Friday afternoon, you'll see it pop up a little bit again here, but you can kind of see it starting to decrease here as we get towards the weekend, and that high pressure really gets established across the area. There's Saturday afternoon, almost nothing into Arizona here as we go on in through Saturday afternoon would be shown there. This is looking at uh, the European Ensemble, Phoenix, and the red line is the average temperatures. No relief in sight here for these uh, very warm temperatures here across the region, downright scorching. Here's the average low as well, so these overnight lows are not going to provide much relief you can see a lot of these into the upper 80s even towards 90 degrees there for phoenix so impressive heat wave going on across the region here just going to get worse this weekend this is reno check out reno even getting above 100 for three days there you can see the red line is the average above average temperatures expected to continue through the end of july this is las vegas check it out 
114, 112, just kind of rinse and repeat here. Then you can see the low temperatures here, not getting down to the average low, so not much overnight relief also. Los Angeles, of course, closer to the coastline here, the airport, LAX, yeah, but you can see the temperature still getting into the upper 80s here, but and above average for the extended. This is if you go inland a little bit, look at Burbank Sunday, Monday, could be pushing 100 degrees here as well. Overnight lows not getting down to their usual temperatures also. This is Bakersfield, check it out. 118 Sunday and Monday, impressive overnight lows as well, well above average. This is Sacramento, again, you guys get the picture of what's coming up here, especially this weekend into early next week. Redding, California, already pretty hot this time of year, but well above average. Average. This is Eureka. I like posting this one too, because check it out. The, <laughs> you can see the little tiny bump there, maybe in the temperatures of one or two degrees above average here coming up here. So pretty typical for Eureka right on the coastline there. Their <clears throat> weather is dominated by the Pacific Ocean, the very cold Pacific Ocean I might mention for this time of year as well. This is San Francisco, a little bit of bump in temperatures here as we go through the weekend. Not a bad, you know, a couple days there. Look at mid upper 70s are possible for San Francisco. This is looking at 850 millibars, so let's go ahead and run this through. You can see we did have some below average here across some of the state, but as we go off into the extended, you'll quickly see this heat just kind of take hold, stranglehold on the West Coast all the way up into British Columbia through this weekend and really not relent too much across some of the Southwest above average temperatures there uh, in, the, in the air aloft, according to the European. And there is some disagreement between the GFS and the European on the troughs moving through the Pacific Northwest. Not huge impacts across some of the desert southwest. Could have just minimal changes in what temperatures we might expect through the extended, but we'll watch that as we go. So here's California. Check it out. You can see the below average temperatures, you know, across the region, but that's not going to last long. And if we get towards the weekend here, you'll see the red just overtake the state all the way up the west coast here. And as we scroll through, you can see that kind of continue on through the end of July for much of the area. The above average temperatures should continue. Now, what we'll do here is we'll check out the 500 millibar temperatures. We're scrolling backwards here, so let's now play it forward. And you can see that ridge of high pressure build up in through California. You can see that trough back out over the Pacific Ocean, allowing that ridge all the way up into BC there. And then as you bring that trough through, it doesn't have much of an effect across that high on the desert southwest. I mean, a little bit, but still, it's not going to make big differences here across much of California. And you can see the European wants to build back this ridge after that as well. So we can continue this heat. And, you know, this forecast is going to be ever-changing as we look off into the extended. So we'll continue to watch that as we could have some um, above-average temperatures or even uh, very warm temperatures go on in through the end of July. This is a 6 to 10-day precipitation outlook. You can see that below-average signal there. But trying to bump up a little of that monsoon activity through the extended. We'll continue to watch that 8 to 14-day as well. A little bit of sign of life here as we go through the extended forecast. This goes through July 25th here, and this is the 6 to 10 day temperature probability, as you can see above average conditions will exist here probably towards June 21st. Now, this is sea surface temperature anomalies. You can see we're back here on April 13th, and you can see the cooler water across the equatorial Pacific here. We've got this battle here between this colder than normal water and attempting to develop El Nino here across the equatorial Pacific here. And we've got a little bit of a pause here going on about the last month or so, but this is not that unusual here in developing El Nino. So it's going to be very important um, to see what happens and with the future evolution of El Nino as we go through the summer months in towards the fall. And we'll really learn a lot here over the next few weeks as these things tend to go through some of these pauses sometimes and then these temperatures start to bounce back across the equatorial Pacific. So we'll look at that in some more detail here as we go on into the future. You can see that we were really close to being in moderate conditions already. You can see the climb from La Nina towards the El Nino conditions across the equatorial Pacific. And uh, finally caulking in at 0 0.5 average official conditions there for the month of May. This would be June, July, August. So almost certainly headed towards an El Nino. Just how strong will it be? We are just not quite sure just yet. We could still be headed towards a strong El Nino. This is looking at the CFS. You can see where there would be that pause there, then the attempt to get back towards the strong El Nino as we go through the extended. And you can see kind of what it would look like here on a month-by-month -month basis with that warm water extending across the equatorial Pacific there. So anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys are getting a little bit of relief here for the next couple of days with some of this thunderstorm activity. But it's definitely going to warm up here as we go through the weekend and we're going to suppress that activity. But there's always hope through the extended. You guys saw the extended outlook there for some of the above average potential there. Maybe Maybe the monsoon will get cranking here as we get towards the end of the month. We'll see how that goes. But not much of a sign for precipitation across California. Maybe a 
couple showers across the Sierra Nevada over the next week or so, but not much else to speak of. Yeah, so be prepared for that heat. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow, and I'll talk to you guys then.